Hey guys, how you doing? It's been a while. I just wanted to say that if you need to contact me, I get a lot of people contacting me through different platforms and uh, they're writing me. And the problem is they're going through eBay messages. They've got questions, they've got service work that they need to, need to have done. And when it gets into things like that that have nothing to do with the radio that I'm listing, uh, and even if, it, even if it did, I can't put my contact information in for you to be able to get a hold of me. The best way to get a hold of me is to leave a comment on this video and also, don't just leave the comment on the video, go to my YouTube channel, go to discussions, and send me a, send me a message. And I'll find, find out who you are, and we'll go from there. But this back and forth on eBay doesn't work. It just doesn't work out. I can't, don't have time in the, enough time in the day to write paragraph after paragraph after paragraph to get you guys informed on what you need. There's just too much, the, too many variables. I'd like to buy, it's just like somebody saying, I'd like to buy a car. Well, okay, so you want to buy a car. What type of car? Are you looking for a sports car, a sedan? Are you looking for an SUV, a utility vehicle, a pickup truck? What kind of terrain are you going to be driving, you know, driving on? Things like that. And there's so many variables between the radios that uh, I can't keep going back and forth on eBay messages. At some point, I need to talk to you. There are a lot of people, and most of the people who get a hold of me are very nice. Some are very, very rude. And there's also guys who will write, and all they're doing is they're looking for information. They don't know about the radios that they want and uh, they get a hold of me and I answer all their questions, I spend all the time. Technicians make a good amount of money and I'm a radio tech. And the service time uh, to talk to me is worth something. I don't charge anybody for, you know, to give advice on uh, the things that they answer, uh, or that they ask, rather. But we need to get around the eBay messages. And this is the only way to do it. The people who watch my channel know that they can leave a comment. I'll get the alert. If you, if you leave a message on the discussion page, or a private message, or whatever it is, I can get a hold of you. But you need to be serious about buying a radio. Uh, you need to know exactly... I can't do all the foot, footwork for you. You're going to have to know the frequencies, you're going to have to know the model numbers, you're going to have to have the breakdown, the flash code breakdowns. If you work for an agency, you know, what your profession is. There's a lot of different variables involved in this. If you're on a phase one system, or if you're on a phase two system, things like that. In the next month, I'm going to try and put out a video that addresses a lot of the questions that you've been asking on how to buy a radio. I've had a video like that in the past, but it's old, and evidently I need to uh, make a new one. So I'm going to try and do that within the next month. I'm a busy guy. i got a lot going on. But there's a lot of guys that just, all they want is they want the information and then they want to bypass, you know, the reputable sellers and just buy a surplus radio, which has been beat to shit, you know, that's a correction, corrections radio. A lot of these radios are coming out of the correction, 
correctional facilities. They've been beat to shit. And the circuitry in these radios is sensitive. They're, the, these radios get older through, through time. You've got, you need to know about firmware. There's a lot of things you need to know about. And I can't address every one of them. It would take me more hours in the day than, I, than, than there are hours in the day to actually write back and write back and write back and write back the questions. You know, if you get into things like CPS, uh, what happens when I pull up a program and what do I do next? Well, the first thing I can tell you is that you're going to need a good cable. Generic cables may work, and they do work, but if you have a 9-pin input, if it's, a, if it's not a USB programming cable, you will need to buy a USB to 9-pin adapter, and you need to get a, what's a physical mini CD and you need to, it's a driver, driver CD, and you need to write that into the, uh, or I mean, you need to activate that in order for the radio to read and write. When you first get in and you've read the radio, you need to save the code plug. Save it like to your desktop. Save it before you do anything. And make sure it's something that you can find easily. If you have a fail 0182, that means the radio failed to write. And what essentially that does is that turns your radio into a brick. Now, the best way to get to avoid that is to use an OEM Motorola cable, but those things run like 275, and that's a lot of money. So, if you've just got to use the USB adapters are the linchpin that hold everything else together. And if you want to go cheap, then you take your chances. But if you get a fellow 182, do not unplug the radio, do not power the radio down. Whatever you do, go back up and rewrite it. It will give you a hardware failure. You click OK and then you just wait for it to force write again and sometimes that process may take several times to do that but if you keep doing that your chances are good that it's finally going to take you know there could be problems with your housing could be problems with the flux could be problems with the radio you just don't know but You've got phase two, you've got phase one, you've got DMR. There's a lot of things you need to know about. I'm not an expert by, you know, by so many people's standards. There's a couple guys that I know. One guy's named Mark Dannon. He runs Northcom up in New York. And another fellow I know uh, does, well, he does alignments. And his name's Felix. Both of them do alignments. And they do it right. Their machines are certified. Just because somebody who sells radios say that uh, the radio's been aligned on a blah, 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 you know, machine. Well, those things need to be calibrated. They need to, they need to be updated. There's a lot that goes on to, on to things like that. Uh, Mark and uh, Felix are both two solid guys who know more about radios than I ever will. And uh, they also know about infrastructure and they can set up systems for entire counties and entire cities. And it all depends on what you need. If you need a radio for a scanner, well, I'll tell you one thing. These radios are five watts max so you get one mile line of sight line of sight to talk you know talk back and forth to each other on a radio the best thing if you want to use it as a scanner is to get it just buy yourself a scanner 
uh, buy one that does phase one and phase two and possibly DMR and you're done if you just want to listen to police radio traffic uh, there's encryption that's involved and there's a lot of people who get a hold of me and say well I want to be able to listen to all the encrypted police transmissions well that falls under the Federal Wiretap Act that was I think it was born in the 90s but there's been several revisions to that but it's a federal offense and uh, you shouldn't be doing that and just as you shouldn't be trying to affiliate to a tower uh, trunking tower it's not it's not going to work out for you you'll be paying heavy fines and they can brick your radio uh, inhibit your radio there's a lot of different things they can do it's not a good practice but if you think that your radio has encryption in it and just because it has encryption in it hardware encryption uh, that you'll be able to pick up the encrypted channels. That's not the case. You need to know what the values are in the encryption and the chances uh, they do over the air rekeying all the time and the chances of you hitting committing a federal offense and hitting uh, cracking into police departments and fire departments and EMS that are encrypted which I do not recommend in any way, shape, or form, the chances of that actually working is like finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, you're just not going to be able to do it. It's not a good practice. Don't do that. The radios that uh, are out today, a lot of the police departments will use encryption. Now, encryption for you, if the radio's got ADP encryption, some some departments use ADP only. Some of them use DESOFB. The military usually uses AES-256. But uh, and then there are DVI. Uh, there, there are several other algorithms. But the bottom line is, if you have questions about a radio, I can help. But, you know, I don't really like the fact that some people just want to pump me for information with no intention of actually making a radio purchase from me and when it comes to programming radios I do not program radios I program these radios with as many features as I possibly can and uh, the ones that are FPP are ready to go right out of the box and there's a lot of sellers who just don't don't go the, take, take those extra steps but as far as actually inputting your frequencies I'm not going to do that uh, it's just not a good idea you're responsible for programming your own radios or having a program if you're in law enforcement nah, my cat's there if you're in law enforcement you can take your radio to the the tech that works at the, at the agency and he'll program your radio up. But you do need an FCC license. You need, you need to know what you're doing. And you need to have approval. But you can, if you just want uh, civilian GMRS channels, you know, that, that's another, another story. But anyway, I'm going along on this. If you need to get a hold of me, leave a comment in the video and leave a comment in the discussion and be serious about what you're doing the bottom line is I'm not going to do all your legwork for you you know there will be people who will say I live in Dallas Fort Worth uh, what radio do I need well all I have to do is go to Google and find that out and really that's that's a step that the buyer should make you need to be informed about your radio purchases and it doesn't fall on the seller to inform you you're spending a lot of money and a lot of people will buy the wrong radio and then wind up having to resell it as a loss because they picked the wrong radio for their area 
and for their needs. But within the next month, I'm going to just put a, a video out. Hopefully, I don't know how long it'll be, but it'll be about a month uh, if things go right. And I'll set some time back to where I can do like a 30 or 45 minute video on, well, I don't know if it'll be that long, but on what to look for when you're buying a radio. The model number breakdowns, I'll have links in the description, uh, flash code decoder, how to de decode flash codes, uh, different things, and where to go to find out your radio frequencies. You've got to do the legwork. You know, it's not all on the seller to do that. Sellers sell radios. You've got to, it's just like a car. You've got to know how to drive the car before you buy the car. So, you've got to know exactly what you need before you get into this. And I don't mind answering questions. I don't. But when you need service work done, I cannot give you my my information. It's it's against eBay policy and I'm not about to lose my uh, reputation and my business selling on eBay because they'll terminate within a certain amount of violations of giving contact information out. They can terminate, they can suspend, and then there goes, you know, there goes one avenue of selling. A lot of the radios I sell directly to police departments, so it doesn't impact me as much. But, at the same time, I'm not going to get into risking losing my account by trying to get you to, uh, by giving out my personal information so you can get a hold of me. If you need to get a hold of me, like I said, leave a comment leave a, a message in the discussion. I can get a hold of you and then we can go from there. But I want to keep up with eBay's rules. I don't like going around their rules. I don't believe in that. But if there's somebody that needs service work done or has other questions, I can't keep going back and forth uh, time and time and time and time again to answer questions that uh, that have no bearing on uh, on one of my radios listed you know for sale if I have one that's listed for sale then I can give you all the information you need on that radio I don't like selling radios to people who don't know what they need but the legwork's got to come from you on that part. I can give you tips in this next video of what to look for and how to look for it. And I don't think there's many guys around who are on eBay who will do that. If you buy a radio from the liquidator, you take your chances. If you want to buy a radio that's iffy, that you don't know how long it'll last, that, you know, has been beat to shit, that's on you. But the people who buy them, I, I spend more money on my radios and I make sure everything is done correctly and I go through the radio inside and out and most sellers don't do that. And then, there, then you get these sellers that like to claim that they're a big company, you know, they'll say we do this and we do that. Well. I'm a one-man show and I know a lot of those people who say we when I know it's just a one-guy operation and you know that's that just kind of makes me chuckle but at the same time I hope you're all doing well I hope the video that's coming up will be helpful if I get enough likes on this I'll I'll definitely make one but you need to know what to look for in the radios that you're buying and hopefully this will answer a lot of your questions. This video won't, but it's at least announcing that if you need to get a hold of me, how to do so. Take it easy, guys. Later on.